On Tuesday, April 11th, CBS is launching CBS Sports Go Lasso Network, which is a first-of-its-kind free 24-7 streaming channel in the United States dedicated solely to soccer, which is a first for the United States. Now, this channel will have live matches, highlights, documentaries, magazine shows, previously recorded matches, and its own dedicated studio show called Morning Footy, which has a four-set team that will be talking about the latest updates and news throughout the world of soccer every single day for two hours on weekdays. Days. So today, World Soccer Talk had the opportunity to talk to Pete Radovich, who is the VP of Production and Creative Director of CBS Sports. World Soccer Talk asked Pete Radovich about how this idea came about, the idea behind Morning Footy and what his intentions are with that, and the impact of Grant Wall and his documentaries on what will be able to air on Golasso Network. Pete, I want to uh, say thanks for uh, taking this opportunity to talk to me. I want to ask you about CBS Sports Golasso Network because it's something that is pretty unheard of in the U.S., I would say. What was the the thought process behind launching CBS Sports Colossal Network, and what made you want to do it? Well, I mean, the idea was Jeff Kertula's, which, you know, I give him all credit. He mentioned it to me over a year ago, and from the moment he first mentioned it, uh, it was one of those ideas when you hear it, you think that's 100% something that needs to happen. So from the moment he mentioned it to me, I had already started thinking about if this were to happen, what it would look like. Um, and then, you know, once we secured Champions League for the next few years, it became obvious that we were going to, you know, be in the sport for a while. And and we're always looking to innovate, always looking for new ideas and ways to expand not just our properties, but the sport in general. So it, it was a couple of meetings about, can we do this? What would it look like? And it was pretty quick. Uh, yes, across the board. So um yeah, we're really excited about it. Um, it's it's something that has consumed every free minute of my life for the last several months. Um, you know, it's hard to sleep some nights thinking about ideas and ways you wish this can go and hope you can, it will go. But um, we're we're getting close to you know launching, and we're pretty excited about what things look like so far. So some of the programs that will be airing on the TV channel are. Uh, live games. I know there's going to be documentaries, magazine shows, pre and post match shows, that kind of thing. And there's also morning footy, which I know is the pretty much the centerpiece, if you could call it that, of CBS Colossal. Now, we're talk to, talk to us about uh, morning footy and the thought process behind that, because it's not the first time we've seen a studio show that is pretty much every day regarding soccer, but this is the first one of its kind in, in a way because it is on this 24 7 channel. So, what is we looking forward to most about morning footy? I think for me, the biggest thing is like right now, if you're a fan of this sport and you wake up in the morning, to me, there's not that, you know, NFL network and other networks, ESPN, they all have their morning show. But if, you know, if, if a news story happens in this space, if a big signing happens, if a Pele passes away in the middle of the night and you wake up and you want to get more um, in depth, look into his life or if Neymar is announced out for three, four months, where are you going to for that discussion? I mean, basically, I think the sports fan by and large, the viewing habits of sports fans in this country, whether they're college students, high school students, or, you know, people in their 50s and 60s, I think you wake up, you know, a lot of people will put on a TV for background, whatever sports morning show they watch and go about their day and start the day off. For us, the, the idea is that if you're a fan of the MLS, if you're a Champions League fan, Serie A, Premier League, um, when you wake up, now you know that there's a morning show that's going to get you up to speed on all the all the storylines. If you miss something in the middle of the night that happened in Europe while you were sleeping, or if it's just highlights from around the league, from around the world in different leagues, um, this is here to service you. So, you know, our, our goal is to educate the fan first thing in the morning with that show, but also entertain. So it's a combination of educate and entertain. And, you know, we feel that we have the personalities to keep it light, keep it fun um, when needed, but also get in depth and bring in reporters from around the world. We'll have Guillaume Balaguer in Europe as an example of a reporter that will be, you know, basically on call when we need someone to give us a little color on a story that's breaking whether it's in Spain or England, wherever. Um, and the same for MLS and the same for NWSL and other leagues that, you know, our fans, American fans will care about. So again, it came down to waking up in the morning, 
you know, I know what I do right now as a sports fan. I wish I had a, a an option for this sport, which really don't. And the fact that we're able to create one is just a, you know, as someone in sports production for a while and someone that's that loves this sport and grew up playing it and 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 you know is is passionate about this is a dream scenario. P, you already mentioned it, all these different leagues that people in the United States are following, whether that be uh, CBS's properties like the like Syria or the Champions League or the Scottish Premiership. There's also the Premier League, the Bundesliga, La Liga, the team, the, the leagues in Eastern Europe. How do you get past the issue of fragmentation in American soccer fandom? Because there someone might tune in to uh this to morning footy and see that they're talking about La Liga, whereas they're just a Syria fan. They they just support Juventus, that kind of thing. So how do you get past that and make sure that everyone is being able to be entertained uh, throughout the two hour uh, program. That is the, that is the toughest needle to thread. I mean, if you're the NFL, you have 32 teams to cover and one league and that's, you know, there's a lot there, but it's, that's it. You know, if you're MLB, if you're NHL, you've got your 30, 29, whatever it is, 32 teams to cover. And that's it. We've got 32 plus leagues to cover, as you mentioned, around the world. So that to us is going to be a work in progress. Obviously, you know, the people that we have, one of the secrets to our success, I believe, if you want to call it successful, um, has been that the production people we have behind the scenes are hardcore fans. They are hardcore people that grew up like myself playing it. Uh, following it, we didn't need to bring in outside people. These are people that are these are production people like Mike Nastri, Jelani Rooks, um, that have worked Super Bowls, that have worked Final Fours, that have worked the Masters. You know, they've worked television production at the highest level, and now they're transitioning into a sport that they're most passionate about. So we have a pretty good, youngish, young, diverse uh, production team that I think has a pretty good handle on what the viewers would care about, but there is no perfect formula. There is no, you know, no one's handing me a, a guidebook. No one's handing me a, an instructor's manual and saying, you know, this is what you do. We're going to find out, you know, pretty quickly um, if we're hitting the right places and we're not, I think obviously we're going to focus as much as we can on storylines that that matter to American fans. Now, if that's American players playing in Europe or if that's MLS and NWSL, we're going to do that. And NWSL is our league. MLS is not. But we're going to cover them nonetheless. Um, if Premier League has a weekend like they just had with a 7-0 game and an Arsenal comeback, that's a story that we're going to talk about. It's not our property. It's not our league. But our fans – that's that's the biggest story on that Monday morning, and that's what we're going to focus on. So, I think you know we'll get into weeds on 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 stories from other leagues. If you're an MLS hardcore, and we're in the middle of a La Liga discussion, I think that La Liga discussion hopefully gives you we'll we'll attack it from a standpoint that you know knowing that the hardcores of this league aren't the only ones watching, and we'll try to educate the MLS fan on La Liga in that moment. So, you know, our biggest thing is, the last thing I'll say about this is that philosophically it was rise, you know, rising tide. It's it's really an opportunity. The fan doesn't care if we're, you know, Serie A's on Paramount Plus or somewhere else. They just want to, they love the sport. And and that's the way we're attacking this. We're, we're hoping to raise the level for educate the fans on all these leagues around the world and what those daily stories are we're just going to have to feel them out and and learn, you know, learn as we go. Yeah, I think part of that ability to keep fans invested is to have a studio crew like uh, like your CBS uh, Champions League coverage had, which I know is is well renowned because they do they do gel so well and they are so entertaining. So when you're looking at Morning Footy's crew, and I'll just say the names real quick: uh, Susanna Collins, Charlie Davies, Nico Cantor, Alexis Guerreros. These are all pretty familiar names, especially uh, Charlie Davies and Nico Cantor having participated previously on uh, other CBS outlets in terms of coverage, including the Champions League. So what kind of, what can you see from this foursome of people that is uh, going to be on Morning Footy? What is your hopes for them in terms of being able to capture an audience and grow Morning Footy and CBS Colossal Network? 
Well, the good news for me is that I've, I've we've already seen them. We've already been doing shows um, in Connecticut where the show will will you know originate from. We've had them come in. We've done a couple of days of, of um, rehearsals where we didn't give them much guidance. We just kind of let them naturally do what comes you know natural to them. And um, you know the promise that I've seen so far is fantastic. The the you know MLS for example. You know, if you're an MLS fan, this is without question a place for you to tune in when you think about how connected all four of them are to that league. Susanna Collins for years did podcasts and events for MLS. Alexis Guerrero's obviously is close ties to MLS. Charlie Davies played in the MLS, covered the covered the league for for New England. And Nico, you know, living in Miami has has been a fan of the league since he can, you know, walk. So, you know, the 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 combination of chemistry, and that is the key word, you know, we, we're lucky to have it. Lucky, not so lucky. It was by design, I, I like to think, <laughs> on Champions League. Um, but we think that we have a pretty good sense of, um, of putting people together. I always say, like, putting a studio show together is like putting two people together on a blind date, right? You kind of know one person. You gotta know their personality, you know the other person, and in your mind's eye, you put them together. There's no way this is gonna miss, right? Like you know this blind date's gonna work. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And you know, I'm not saying we're batting a thousand, but in this case, there's so much familiarity between the four of them, and they're they're all just really good, easy to work with people. And that's the number one criteria when we're looking at you know people on camera, is that. The very first question when I'm researching someone, I'm not ex I'm like actually, the very first question I ask about everyone is how are they off camera? That's what I want to know first and foremost. If they're difficult, if they're this, that, the other, then it's a quick move on. And the four of these are just you couldn't get four more easygoing, just happy to be there. They're all thrilled that they're doing this for a living, and um, I'm just really excited about. Again, back to your question about, you know, what do you hope for and, and what, what do I envision? Chemistry. And I've already seen it. So this show, Footy Morning, my last question about it is, has its principal competitors probably ESPN FC. And outside of just the time switch, which, of course, ESPN FC is in the afternoon, whereas Footy Morning will by name be in the morning. How do you differentiate Footy Morning from ESPN FC? I mean, I, I have to be honest, I, I've not seen much of that show. So I, I can only speak to what we're going to do. And I think a lot of, from the little I've seen, um, I think a big differentiator is going to be social media. I think our culture, kits, um, whether a, a video is going viral, whether, you know, whatever it is that is happening on social media that people are talking about and post reposting or liking and it's going viral around the world, uh, it's going to be a key element in our show. And the fact that the four people that we have on that show, and we haven't even mentioned Jenny Chu, which I'll, I'll get to in a second if you don't mind, um, but the four people we have at the desk are very locked into social media. They're aware of what, you know, what people around the world, in particular younger people around the world, are, are tuning into and, and really, you know, where the attention is. So I think that's one big differentiator. And I think also the fact that, you know, we as a production team um, encourage taking some risks on camera. And I think you see that on our Champions League coverage, on our Serie A coverage, and it's going to obviously be no different here. And when you take risks, sometimes they hit, sometimes they don't, but they make, I think, for interesting moments. So, you know, going off script is another thing that I think is going to, I don't want to call out an ESPN FC because I honestly don't know that show very much or very well. So I'm just going to say versus other studio shows in the space, um, we're going to go off script a lot. And um, I think that'll make for some good moments and some maybe, you know, Maybe some cringy moments. I don't know, but we're going to take some chances and we're going to have fun. It's good to say some of those chances have paid off with the uh, Serie on Champions League coverage. I want to look away from uh, Footy Morning, though, other programs that are going to be on CBS Colossal Network. And one of those will be um, will be documentaries. And I, I got to ask, because I know Grant Wall had a lot of impact on documentaries. And he was working on a lot of things with CBS 
I'm were those documentaries where they were they scrapped after the passing of Grant Wall during the World Cup, or are you still working on building those? Maybe in memory of Grant Wall and using the uh, the journalism and brilliance that he had uh, going forward. Yeah, we're in the process of of, of figuring that out. Um, obviously, you know, work closely with Grant, and it's crazy. Um, I saved the text, obviously, but the day that he passed was the night of. Um, I believe it was Croatia beating Brazil, if I'm not mistaken, but it was a big Croatia game. And I, I think it was them beating Brazil. And he texted me um, knowing that, um, you know, hardcore Croatian fan uh, that afternoon. And then hours later, got a phone call. So um, that day was just the definition of bittersweet. Um, but we're closely with him. And, and as you said, you know, the, the, the hope, the goal is to, in his memory, um, do some really cool stuff that we have. Um, but, you know, it's too early for me to say here with you uh, publicly what that is, but but you're you're certainly on to something. Now, uh, Pete, uh, one of the things that's going to be on CBS Golasso Network is live matches. And I know there have been a Champions League game, Serie A games that have aired on CBS Sports Network, even occasional games on CBS. So if that is to continue with games on CBS or CBS Sports Network, could it be one of those things where, for example, in the Champions League uh, round of 16 uh, uh, quarterfinals, there are two games each day. Could it be something where there's a game on CBS Golasso Network and a game on CBS Sports Network? Or is there really you think uh, this is all hypothetical, of course, but uh, could there be something where uh, it's just one game on these these channels and either one stays on Paramount Plus? Yeah, I think all of that, you know, I don't think I know all of that is being discussed right now by programming. Right. So I'm I'm. I'm good at production. I like to think I'm good at production. I'm not a programmer. And I think, you know, they have certain information on what's going to help um, make this work the best for not only us, but for the fans. So I think everything's open for discussion right now. I've been on some of those calls, but it's it's still to be determined. You know, we're still over a month away from launching. So a lot of those decisions are still to be made. Um, but I think that, you know, of all the leagues we have, there are thousands of games that we have the rights to. Uh, a lot of them will find their ways. Uh, will find their way here, um, whether it's live or re-air. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, listen. The fact that we're approaching this the way we are, with the fan in mind, um, from a studio standpoint and from a promotional standpoint, um, it wouldn't surprise me to see anything on this network. We're, we're all in. I mean, everyone from, from programming to marketing to production, um, everyone is really behind us and excited about it. So I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that you're going to see some pretty good stuff there. But, I, you know, it's, it's still honestly in the middle of uh, being discussed. And Pete, I'll wrap up with this. You mentioned it just then, uh, re-airs of games. That's really important, obviously, for fans here in the U.S., especially those on the West Coast, because, for example, Champions League games are airing at uh, noon their time, and they can't watch that because they're working doing other things so when you talk about re-airs and games airing say at uh, six for them and they're able to watch that game how important is uh, a channel like cbs colossal network in that ability to allow fans to watch games that they may have missed just because of the the timing with the time zones in in the u.s compared to europe yeah i think it's you know listen it, it's one of those things that as i mentioned you know many times with the with the morning show it's like it's somewhere to go right so if you're a fan of this sport right now honestly the biggest thing the only thing you really have are live games and you're at the mercy of a live schedule so if you're in the middle of the day and there's no live games happening in europe there are no live games happening in the united states you now have an option to check out you know and there's a decent chance that there'll be a really good re-air of a high level Champions League game there or a high level Serie A game there. So I think it's something that, you know, as as we're in this me new media world and and you know, second screens and having something up on your big TV while you're working on emails or all, while you're on your phone, I know as I, I could speak for myself as a fan of this sport, I I love having a game on in the background. Just even just as a soundtrack to my day. And having that option now throughout the day with these re-airs, I think it's going to be it's going to be a nice thing. And it's going to be hopefully it's one of the first things that comes to mind 
um, for, you know, fans of the sport is that, you know, let me check out what's on Golazo Network. That's the whole point of this. Right, people, I got to say, I'm really looking forward to the launch of this, like I said, in about mid-April. And I want to thank you for uh, coming on, giving us a little bit more information, a deeper dive into what CBS Colossal Network uh, could have in store for us. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Appreciate you, Pete. Have a good one.